boys and girls. It's Miss Lisa, your art teacher. Welcome to my table of art. Today I'd like to review with you some of the artists that I've introduced you to this week. Remember that I introduced you to some sculptors? Those are people that make these forms out of all different materials. If you remember, our first we had was Giacometti. Do you remember what he did? I think I might have a picture of some of his sculptures. He used different metals to create his sculptures, mostly bronze. If you remember when he started out, the figures were so small that he made that they fit into little matchboxes. He would make people, he would watch people, and then he would recreate them in little forms. Let's see what I have here to show you, Giacometti. Okay, here we go. Giacometti made these people out of bronze. The ones in the picture, they're only about six inches tall. But eventually, they were six feet tall. That was Giacometti. Do you remember when I introduced you to Alexander Calder? He's the one that was famous for the movable sculptures. Here's one where he used primary colors to, and geometric shapes to create his mobile. That was Calder. And if you remember, the last one was Dale Chihuly. Do you remember what he used to create his sculptures? He used glass. Can you imagine glass? He was a glass blower, a very hard trade, but he learned how to do it. It was such a craft and they came out beautiful. If you went through the videos that I sent you, you would have seen all the beautiful sculptures that he made of chandeliers. He made beautiful flowers he called Persians and the wonderful bowls that he called Machias and so much more. His sculptures were made out of glass. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to a new sculptor. You, you're going to be the sculptor for today. We are going to create our own sculptures from some things around the house. So how about we get together and collect all our materials? We're going to need a piece of cardboard. I have a big piece of cardboard here. I don't need one this big, I'm going to cut it down. So of course I'm going to need a scissor. If you don't have a piece of cardboard from any boxes that may have been delivered to the house, if you saved your cereal boxes or oatmeal boxes, those boxes will be fine because the sculpture we're going to create is not heavy in its weight. So any form of cardboard will do well as a base to mount your sculpture. The next thing we're gonna need is an empty paper towel roll because this is what our sculpture is going to be made of. We're also going to need to paint it. And when we paint it, we're going to need acrylic paint. I say acrylic paint because when we use acrylic paint and the finished product will come out nice and bright and vivid with the color. Vivid is bright and bold colors. We're going to need some glue to mount our sculpture to the cardboard. We're going to need a paintbrush to paint the, the sculpture with the paint and a nice clean cup of water to clean our brush in between the colors we paint on our sculpture. You're also gonna need a paper plate because you wanna put your paint on something. This is what I use many times over. This way, I could just throw this out when I'm done or, I'm sorry, I have a piece of hair in my face, it's driving me crazy. Or when this dries, I could just pour more paint on top of it. This is the best thing because I'm not wasting. And you know me, I don't like to waste. Okay, I think that's all the items that we need to get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make this paper towel roll a little more interesting. Right now, it's a nice shape, but is it interesting? Eh, a little bit. How can we transform the shape of a simple paper towel roll? I know, how about we squish it? Squish it, squish it, squish it, squish it. And then maybe we bend it. Let's bend it, bend it, bend it, bend it. And how about we twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Hmm, well that's a lot more interesting than when it first started. 
So, as a beginning, let's manipulate the cardboard paper towel roll into an interesting form. Go ahead, try it out. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to need to mount it to our cardboard. Now, I don't need a piece of cardboard this big, so I'm going to cut it down. Now, I want you to understand, for demonstration today, I'm using one paper towel roll. You can be creative and use two or three or more. That's up to you. That's called creative decision-making. Whatever your artistic decision is, you go for it. But today, just for demonstration, I'm going to do one roll. So I don't need a very big platform to mount it to. So I'm gonna cut down my cardboard. Not too small because the platform will become part of the sculpture. So I want it to have a nice size that it'll be noticeable. I'm gonna cut from the other, uh, other side. Okay, I'm going to put the extra piece aside for another project on another day. Do I want to keep it this big or do I want to cut it down? I think I'm going to cut it down even smaller. That's my artistic decision. Okay, so here's the base that I'm going to mount my cardboard paper towel sculpture on. How am I going to get it to stay? Hmm. Well, I could just put glue on the edge of this roll, stick it here and hold it till it dries. But the only problem with that is I don't know how secure this is going to be to the cardboard mount. So you know what? I'm going to show you a trick. We're going to cut into the base of the cardboard roll about an inch, half an inch to an inch. We're going to make even slits all the way around for the most. Once I've cut into the roll, I'm going to bend up the flats that I created by cutting into the roll. You see how that is? Now I have something way sturdier to mount my sculpture onto. You see that? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Elmer's glue or whatever kind of glue you have, glue stick works too, and we're gonna squeeze all along the base of these flaps here, okay? Don't be cheap with the glue. So glue it nice and heavy, stick it to your paper, your cardboard base and let it dry. I've got one prepared that's already dried, so I'm gonna pull that out for now. And this is my sculpture. Now, as interesting as this sculpture is, I'd like to add some color to it. And that's where our acrylic paint's going to come in, okay? So, I want you to think about another artist that you have been introduced to in the past. Can you remember who used very bright, bold colors, shapes, and patterns to create his paintings and sculptures? Can you remember his name? We did a project with that. Hmm. And he used really thick black markers and paint to separate his shapes and lines, colors, and patterns. You remember? I know you're thinking about him, but you got on the tip. You can't remember his name. Romero Brito. He was a wonderful sculptor, painter, pop artist. These were some of his paintings and his sculpture. Remember the friendship bear on the bottom? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to use his technique when painting your sculpture. So what does that mean? That means I'd like you to use vibrant colors, mix your colors, mix your shapes, make different lines, create different shapes, and then we're going to divide it when it dries using our Sharpie marker, okay? So go on and paint your sculpture and I'll meet you back here when you're done, all right? Well, guess what? I'm done, so I'm going to show you mine. I have it on the side here. 
I've already painted one so I could have it ready for you. I painted the base. That's why I told you the base is just as important as the sculpture. And I created all different lines and patterns and shapes. And I used all different colors. Now I didn't finish this. As you notice, I didn't outline all the shapes and lines up here. I started on my base and I'm working my way up. But look at the difference of how these colors and these lines pop when I use the black outline. Isn't that beautiful? This side, I didn't use it yet on these lines. And this orange almost blends in with the pink. You don't even see it. But when I outline it in the black marker, it pops and you could really see it. So what do you think of my sculpture? I'm not done. I still have to finish outlining. But I think it came out pretty nice. You think so? So do I. So listen, go and paint, have fun, use some beautiful colors, make some beautiful lines, curvy lines, zigzag lines. Remember all your lines, straight lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines. Use them all, incorporate them in your sculpture, mix in some shapes, hearts, flowers, circles, squares, Blend the colors, mix the colors, make it as beautiful as you want. It's your decision how your sculpture is going to be because you are the artist for the day. All right, and this is it for today. Our sculpture is done. If you can, I would love to see some of the art you've been creating. I wanna make sure that you're keeping up with all your lessons. Please send your teacher a picture of the work that's completed so I can make a big poster of all our work. I'd really love to see how it came out. Well, until our next lesson, I'd like you to be creative when you're, create, when you're creating your own art. I want you to use your imagination because that's really a good thing to use. Um, I want you to always keep art in your life. And don't forget Miss Lisa because I have not forgotten any of you. I miss you all so very, very much, and I cannot wait till we'll we're all together again because I really enjoy being with you and making art with you. I hope you miss me too. Remember, art rules. Have fun, kids. Until our next art lesson, be good, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.